Okay, so look, I'm gonna start off the video by saying I fucking love this game. I've been playing it ever since the closed beta, and while I'm not amazing at it, I still love it nonetheless. Now recently, I've noticed that there's been a huge influx of new players joining For Honor ever since the new characters got announced, as well as the starter edition being free for a week on PC, and what I wanted to do is to clear up some myths and some rumors that new players might believe about the game. So without having a long ass intro, let's get right into the video. Now the first myth, and quite a popular one, is that For Honor has one of the most, if not the most, toxic communities. You may have heard that the player base in For Honor is full of nothing but toxic players who constantly talk shit and try to get you pissed off. But honestly, this is very far from the truth. Salt and rage videos attract lots of attention, and content creators try to capitalize on it. Look, I'll even be honest and admit that I've done it as well, and those videos are the most viewed ones on my channel. You see, when I started making those videos, I never realized how negatively it was affecting the community. I simply saw that those videos were doing well and thought they were harmless entertainment. After realizing this, I decided that while I'm not going to discard every single video that features some asshole with a mouth, I'm simply going to shift focus and not have those videos be the main attraction for my channel. Now with that being said, it's easy to see that of course from an outside perspective, when all you see is those kinds of videos, it's easy to get the impression, wrong as it may be, that the community is toxic. People who make content know that videos like that explode with views, so they intentionally exploit the ugly side of the community with no regards to the community itself. In reality, most of the players play fairly and with honor, as the name suggests. And if you message them and tell them that you're a new player and are trying to learn, they will often slow down, show you the ropes, and help you out. The down and dirty truth is, of course, that there are toxic players in just about every single gaming community. But you have to understand that most of the time, those toxic few are the most vocal crowd, which makes it look like they're everywhere. The second myth people seem to believe about For Honor is that the servers are bad. Now look, I'm not going to sugarcoat it. In the beginning, I will admit that the servers had some stability issues, mainly in 4v4 game modes, but you have to understand that this is the first game of its kind and of course, there will be a few hiccups along the way. The community, ever the powerful force for change, rallied and demanded better servers. And over time, the developers heard their cries and did just that. For Honor has went through countless server updates trying to fix stability issues and even made the switch to dedicated servers. Now is most definitely the best time to play For Honor since it has been released. Honestly, I play quite a lot and I have not been disconnected from a game in the last 3-4 to four months. The third myth that I'm going to talk about is that people think the game has broken and overpowered characters that everybody abuses. Most fighting games seem to always have that one or two overpowered and dare I say it, overplayed characters, used by what I like to refer to as tier whores, aka the people who choose their main based on some tier list. Unlike when the game was first released, For Honor has reached a state in where most characters are on equal grounds. Not all of them of course, but the developers are currently working on reworks for all the available characters. The developers are constantly analyzing gameplay data and community driven feedback to consistently rebalance and rework the characters and the game itself. Each character has counters and the game provides a practice mode, as well as AI driven games for you to refine your skills against the specific character that you are having a difficult time fighting against. You also have to understand that there is no one single character that wins every single matchup. There will always be certain matchups that just aren't in your favor. That's why in most competitive fighting games people have their main that they always use and pocket characters for counter picks for those exact moments. Take some time, go into the new training mode and find out what to do against the moves or characters you are having trouble fighting against and practice practice practice. The fourth myth that I personally heard quite a bit is that the game is too hard to learn and fight against those who know what they're doing. Unlike most traditional fighting games that rely on long, complicated button combos, Tekken or Street Fighter for example, For Honor has one of the most if not the most intuitive and easy to pick up fighting systems there is. Once you get the basic controls down, you're good to go, which admittedly can be slightly difficult to pick up at first simply because they're so different from the traditional fighting games. The hardest part of the game will be learning the matchups and different movesets of all the characters but the mechanics themselves are very easy and will take you a week or two at most to learn. Pick a character and learn their moveset when you're first getting started. I promise you, you'll be beating the pros in no time at all. The final myth, and quite frankly, the most important one, is that the game is dead. What's the use for the perfect multiplayer game if you have nobody to play with? But, ladies and gentlemen, I am here to tell you today that For Honor has not and will not be dead for quite some time. Honestly, I've never had to wait more than a minute or two for all game modes at all times of the day and night. 
Usually, I find a match in just 30 seconds or less. I mean, except Skirmish, of course, but honestly, that game mode kind of sucks and needs to be removed from the game. Furthermore, in the last few months, there have been some several crazy deals where you could pick up For Honor at a steal. Not only that, but the developers just made the Starter Edition free for a week on PC, which really helped grow the player base. Now, with all these factors combined, we are constantly seeing a steady flow of new and old players alike on the battlefield. Briefly touched on before, but the developers are absolutely engaged and in touch with the community, which brings in new players who want some of the action and keeps veterans attentive at all times. They have weekly dev streams, upcoming reworks in the pipeline, new characters releasing soon, as well as new game modes, new maps, and of course global events and community challenges. 